This is Kevin McMurray with TrackingSharks.com. Today we're talking about a bull shark attack at Reddington Beach, Florida. Jackie Forrest, 68, was vacationing with her sister and a few friends when they headed to Reddington Beach. She said the water looked normal with the poor visibility and waves that were about one and a half to two feet high. Forrest and her sister Marilyn decided to hop in the water and headed out to about 20 feet from shore. They floated on their pool noodles in four and a half to five foot deep water with several other people almost forming a line perpendicular to the beach. Further up the beach, Stephanie Glenn and her sister spotted two sharks feeding in the deeper water. One of the two sharks breached the surface straight up and we saw the belly, then the profile of the sharks as they started swimming at the surface towards shore, Glenn reported to the dorsal shark reporting app. Glenn said the warning began spreading down the coast as she and her sister ran down the beach warning people to get out of the water. Force and her sisters did not hear the warning. Instead, they heard the shark behind them. Force said, We heard a huge noise behind us and turned to see two sharks breaching in the water behind us. Force and her sister started heading to shore, moving as fast as they could while not panicking. She was in three and a half to four feet of water when she felt a bump on her right leg and knew it was the shark. The shark then came around and grabbed my left leg, she said. Like many other shark attack survivors, she described the bite as feeling pressure on her leg. She said she did not panic or move, and the shark released its grip. I remember thinking, you actually bit me, you SOB, she said. Once the shark let go, she began rushing to land as fast as she could, as the shark moved in front of her, now in the two to three foot deep water. Get away from me, get away from me, she screamed as she turned away from the shark and finally hit the sand. Glenn and her sister grabbed some towels while two men picked up Forrest and carried her up the beach. The sisters used the towels to put pressure on the wounds as other Good Samaritans dialed 911. Forrest said fire rescue showed up quickly and one of the firefighters kept talking to her to prevent her from going into shock. She was taken to Bayfront Medical Center by ambulance and released later that day after receiving only 10 stitches. Not bad when you consider the wound was nearly 14 inches across. Based on the measurements of her wound, an estimated 6 to 7 foot bull shark grabbed her leg. She grew up in St. Pete, Florida. Beaching and boating is in her blood. I love the ocean, she said, and she has already been back to the beach. Forrest and the Glenn sisters handled themselves well, the Glens by warning those in the water of the shark, and Forrest by quickly and calmly exiting the water. Once she was attacked, she did not pull her leg from the shark's mouth, which could have caused much more damage. Instead, she let the shark release its grip and then darted the other way back onto the beach. Had she been in deeper water, I would have recommended striking the shark in the eyes and gills. So what would you have done if you were at the beach? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. You can give us a super thanks, join our YouTube membership, or support us on Patreon.com at Patreon.com slash Tracking Sharks. You can also join the conversation on social media by following at Tracking Sharks. Thank you for watching and let us know what kind of videos you would like to see by commenting in the comments below. Be safe and get wet soon. Four said the rescue. Four said fire rescue. Four said fire rescue showed up quickly and one of the firefighters kept talking to her to be to prevent her from going into shock. Shock. She grew up in St. Peach. She grew up in St. Pete, Florida. She grew up in St. Pete, Florida.